This is the review of the Razer Blade Stealth 2020. Let's get started. So this is the Razer Blade 2020. Uh, it looks really small and the charging brake is 100 watts and it's really small. So I'm actually coming from my MacBook Pro 2012 15 inch and I'll be sharing with you my I'll be sharing with you my thoughts on the design materials, build quality, connection and input, keyboard touchpad webcam, thermal noise performance, battery life, CPU and much more. Let's take a look at the design materials and the build quality of this. So as you can see, um, the Razer logo is barely visible, but it's a fingerprint magnet, just like that. I didn't want to clean it because I wanted you guys to see. Uh, it looks sleek for gaming, but it also looks good for work. On the underside, um, you have two fans. I've used this for a while and it, uh, I've put it in my bag and moved it around, but it looks pretty good with no um, scuffs or anything, especially without um, a case. So this is made from a single block of aluminium, uh, CNC aluminium uh, machinery, which is really good. However, uh, one thing I wish they did better was the coating for the fingerprints. And um, I'm afraid that the, the matte black color would chip off over time as I, I've seen some videos online that um, they, they, they start to get chips along the sh sharp edges as they scrape along stuff and um, the paint peel peels and it becomes silver instead of black. In terms of build, it's actually really sturdy. It's well balanced and it can be uh, it's well balanced and it's not heavy to carry, and can be lifted up with one hand, um, especially on the lid. Let me adjust this here. See, one hand. It's the only Windows laptop that I think comes close to the MacBook Pro in terms of build quality and design. Now let's take a look at the I/O. So on the I.O. there's a headphone microphone combo jack, a USB-C that can be used for charging, but this one has no Thunderbolt 3, and a USB 3.0. On the other side, there's also a USB 3.0 but and a USB-C, but this one has uh, charging. One thing I also have liked is if they were to have the fan grills, um, not a uh, fan at, not at the bottom, but at the back or on the sides, but that's just a wish. Now let's take a look at the keyboard. The keyboard is actually really tactile as you can hear and there's a little bit of travel but I would still prefer my MacBook 2012 keyboard. Um, they also fixed the shift key. Razer used the diving board trackpad as you can hear. So on the bottom it's really clicky but on the top it's not. But this is technically the best trackpad you can get on a Windows laptop. It has all the gestures. So let's take a listen of the trackpad and the keyboard. Now let's take a look at the webcam. It's a 1 megapixel 720p HD webcam with infrared face detection for unlocking your device. And here's a mic this sample. This is a test. 1, 2, 3. This is a test. 1, 2, 3. This is a test. The laptop boots up really quickly with its 512 SSD um, memory stick and it also shutdowns really quickly. The display is a full HD 120Hz display. There are no pixels and appears to be very clear on the 13 inch monitor. As for the speakers, the speakers are really loud but they're not bassy. So here's a sample for you to listen to. Let's look at some gaming performance which would show us the power of the GPU, the GTX 1650 Ti. Um, as you can see the settings are on the highest or extreme settings but I'm able to get about 100 to 120 hertz easily playing something like League of Legends or Hearthstone. 
the, the one of the problems I find with this is that they actually power throttle their processors up to 25 watts while plug in or 15 watts on the battery. And they do this with so much thermal space because the processors and the GPU never reach above 86 degrees from my testing, whether it's on full load or gaming or uh, running benchmarks, which you'll see in a bit. So it feels like driving a Lamborghini, but not being able to hit uh, anything more than 90 km per hour because you're limited by uh, the BIOS. And you can find more about this in the description. I'll leave a link on it. Now for the stress test, I'm using throttle stop to test the speed. And as you can see, it hits the 3.5 GHz. It never reaches 3.9 before being thermal throttled down to about 2 GHz because the CPU is capped at 25 watts, even though like it can boost by 33 watts. But the temperatures never hit above 87 or 86 degrees. So I feel that Razer could actually make this run a bit faster and um, allow for a little bit of heat because there's a lot of space as you can see in this test. And as for the fan noise, I don't hear anything. I will stop talking and let you guys hear it in a second. I also don't hear any coil whine, so that's actually quite a good thing for this to run so quiet and silent. To add to my point earlier, this is the test I did to see the thermal throttling results at sustained load. With just the battery uh, using the GPU and CPU, I was capped at 12 watts. And with the battery with no dedicated GPU being used, I was capped at 15 watts. And when connected to the AC, the and the GPU was being used with the CPU, I was limited to 15 watts as well. Just using the CPU with the power plugged in, I was able to get 25 to 33 watts. But 33 watts is only on boost. It was not sustained. Usually it drops back down to 25 watts. During sustained workload, the most the clock speed can sustain its load is at 2.4 to 2.7 GHz with the AC plugged in and max settings. However, it's not due to a thermal issue because there's a lot of thermal headroom. Looking at the clock speeds, when the battery is in use with a dedicated GPU at 100%, the max clock speeds I could get was 1.4 GHz to 1.8 GHz. With no GPU being used, the max I could get was 2 GHz sustained on the battery. And with the AC and dedicated GPU, I could get 1.2 to 1.6 GHz. And with the AC with no GPU being used, I could get 2.2 to 3.4 GHz. 3.4 GHz is the turbo, but at most it's usually 2.7 GHz. Do note that this is a design choice by Razer, and it can't be changed as it's deeply built into the BIOS, and changing the BIOS will actually void the warranty. I will share more on a forum on this in the link below. Now let's talk about the battery life. The Razer Blade Stealth comes with a 53.1 watt hour battery. So for my testing, I've kept the brightness to 40%, the keyboard on a static light at 35%, and I've undervolted it by 55 MV on throttle stop. My test includes light gaming, um, playing Hearthstone, uh, coding and doing uh, watching YouTube videos, and uh, general web browsing and reading of articles. So um, in the three settings, there are best performance, better battery, or battery saver. And I'll go through each one of them uh, with you. On the battery saver settings, the web browsing gets about 9 hours. Uh, coding and watching YouTube tutorials get me about 6.5 hours. And light gaming with Hearthstone on medium at 30 frames per second, I get about 4 hours to 4.5 hours. On the better battery settings, I get about 7.5 hours of web browsing. Coding on uh, JavaScript or um, Python and watching YouTube videos on tutorials on it, I get about 5 hours and on light gaming at medium, I get about 3 hours. Of course, you do take note that uh, on the better battery settings, uh, things move a little bit faster and the processor isn't capped, so I do get a bit uh, faster response time with my work. And on the best performance, on the web browsing, I get 6 hours. Coding, I get about 3.5 to 4 hours. And on light gaming, it's only about two to two and a half hours. Of course, do take note that Hearthstone is a really light game. So if you're using a game that requires more GPU power, it's going to be less than two hours or two and a half hours. Do take note that undervolting gave me an additional one hour to two hours for each task. So on default settings, you will get probably less than what I've gotten. So let's talk about pricing. Well, the Razer Blade Stealth in my country costs 2999 SGD. 
and I found it a bit expensive for the power I've gotten. And if you compare it, compare it to the Razer Blade 15, which comes with a RTX 2060 graphics card, it has 6 core CPU, 10 gen. It has a bigger 65 watt hour battery compared to the 53 watt hour on the Razer Blade Stealth, and it has 144 hertz screen compared to a 120 hertz screen. Additionally, you could save your money, let's say about $300 or $400 and get the GTX 1660 Ti version of the Razer Blade 15. It comes with uh, more memory, so it comes with 1TB hard disk and 256 SXD. It has still a bigger battery of 65 watts and a full HD 144Hz 6 core CPU compared to the Razer. For the money of $300 or $400 you save, you could easily buy an external graphics card or a mouse or have a good dinner, you know? We can also start to consider other brands like MSI GS65. It has a 1TB SSD, it has a 144Hz screen, it has a 6 core CPU, though it's the 9th gen, but it's still a lot better than what Razer Blade Stealth offers on the quad core 10th gen. And with this, you actually get 2 years of warranty, whereas on the Razer Blade Stealth, you only get 1. So, is the GTX 1650 Ti on the Razer Blade Stealth worth it? Well, this laptop is punching above its weight class with similar performance to some 15-inch laptops. But it's hard to recommend this laptop to a lot of people because of the price alone. For what you're paying for, you're actually focusing more on the portability, build quality and the power per size. But this will not really appeal to people uh, that require more power. This is more suited for people that require more portability for work and light coding and a little bit of light gaming on the go. For myself personally, I've got a shoulder injury, so this laptop actually suits my needs when I travel and go for work and do some light coding. With that, I would like to thank you for your time. Do like and subscribe and let me know how I can improve on my video or on my content. With that, take care everyone and God bless. See you guys in the next video.